What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with immersive engineering. And today guys, we're going to be setting up the distillation tower, which is the next logical step in what we've been working on, which is setting up an oil processing plant. Now, if you missed last episode, we set up the pump jack, which is where all the magic starts. This is what's going to allow you to harvest crude oil from the world, wherever you manage to find it. So luckily we got some right next to our base. It is not that difficult to find. But uh, yeah, so last episode we talked about how to set all that up, and then we didn't really do anything with the crude oil. It's currently sitting here being stored, and you can see we have about 413.5 buckets of it. So a fair bit, this thing's getting pretty full in there, as you can see, and so we now need to do something with it, and that is where the distillation tower comes in, and the reason I say it's probably the most important step is it is going to turn nothing into some very valuable stuff. So we can't really do anything with crude oil, but we can definitely do stuff with gasoline and diesel. And those are the two main things that we are going to be producing with the distillation tower today. Now there are some items that we'll get out of it that we can talk about later that are used in making asphalt. And I believe it also gives us lubricant. We can go over that too. But the main things are the power generators, which are going to be, like I said, gasoline and diesel. Now, the whole idea of this setup, and I'm gonna go over this very briefly because we're gonna talk about it next episode when we actually do the full power generation setup, uh, is that you are expending about 70,000 RF for the pump jack to get one bucket of crude oil. Then to process one bucket of crude oil, the distillation tower is going to use about 80,000 RF. So you're using about, you know, if you're rounding, maybe about 150,000 RF for the whole process. And then when you put the gasoline into the portable generator and then you put the diesel into the diesel generator, and yes, we are going to set up another one out here. Uh, so that'll be a little bit expensive. But when you put things into those two, you get about 200,000 RF back. So roughly, and this is rounding a little bit, you know, it could be, I'll say plus or minus a thousand RF, um, but you're going to gain about 50,000 RF per bucket of crude oil that you pull up and process. And so you will be able to create a loop with a net positive gain in RF, which is awesome because we wanna use that for a bunch of other cool stuff. And it means that we can slowly obsolete out the water wheels and things in here. And that is why I have yet to redo all the wiring in the base is because we're now gonna have power coming from out here. We don't need power to go out here. We need it to go somewhere else, wherever it may be in this world for power storage. So without further ado, we can now jump into things because we have a very big thing to set up today. And that is not an understatement. Uh, if you look in here, the distillation tower, which is environmentally unfriendly, uh, is very, very tall. It's not too big in terms of length and width, but height, it's got some height to it. So it's gonna take 25 steel scaffolding, 33 steel scaffolding slabs, 17 fluid pipes, one redstone engineering block, one or four heavy engineering blocks, and 60 iron sheet metal. So a little expensive when it comes to the steel and iron, as to be expected with any immersive engineering or immersive petroleum thing that we're setting up, but all in all, not too bad, not a ton of annoying heavy engineering blocks to make. And so everything that we need is right in here and some extra fluid pipes too for when we start hooking it up. So what we are going to do is grab out the projector and we have the engineer's manual on this and we are going to set up the distillation tower projector because man it would be a pain to try and build this without that then we can open this up in here and we can actually read through it a bit because we need to know where to hook things up so the distillation tower is a large multi-block structure <laughs> no kidding uh that turns crude oil into a number of byproducts blah 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 uh, so crude oil can be input into the distillation tower at the back hatch marked with a blue dot where it will be heated until it separates into a number of layers and they can also produce that byproduct. Uh, it talks about all the different things and the output from the side hatch marked with an orange dot and then the bitmen through the front hatch. And if you look here, you can see how much you get for 75 millibuckets of crude oil. So if you just want to kind of extrapolate that to being one regular bucket, you're going to get 520 millibuckets of gasoline, 360 millibuckets of diesel, and then the rest of it is going to be lubricant with the chance at getting the item byproduct also, uh, which is used, like I said, to make asphalt, which we're not really worried about right now. Uh, but if we look down here, so right here is where it's going to go in, in the back hatch. And then right over on this side is where it's going to come out. And then the power is going to be input 
right there at the corner. So not too bad. Uh, it is nighttime, so we should sleep before we get started on this relatively large project. Um, also, I will say that some things about the video quality and the audio quality may be a little bit different. Um, please bear with me, I will say, just because, uh, and I'll say this before we jump into this, but uh, I got my whole new PC set up. I transferred everything over, but it seems like the microphone settings and everything, even though they should be set up exactly the same, sound a little bit different, uh, newer versions of Audacity and stuff. So hopefully it sounds fine, but uh, I will try and sort of get that all situated in the future once I have some stuff to look back on to compare it to. So just thought I'd let you guys know. But what I want to look at now is actually which portions of the block. So the power and the input and the output are gonna be at the corner with the heavy engineering block. So if we look at this, they're gonna be at that corner. Now, how do we rotate this? I need to go and look at the projector information. I can't even remember. So it's gonna tell us right here, uh, right-clicking it will lock the image in place. Sneak right-clicking will do that. Pressing the pick button will rotate the structure. Okay, so that's what we wanna do. Okay guys, so apparently the big block button is the mouse wheel for me. Uh, I had to go and check what it actually was set to because I did not even remember. So there we go. This is actually probably how we want it so that the power is easily accessible uh, along with the input and output. Now I am going to put it right here. So we're gonna right click with that. And then we need to move pretty much everything out of the hot bar. And we are going to move all this good stuff in here. And then we can get building. And honestly, this is gonna be pretty much terrifying because we're gonna be going up and I'm hoping, it has visuals for a way to get down, but I'm thinking we're just gonna be jumping off of it. So that'll be fun. Um, I hope we don't die. Got a fair bit of levels on me, but I don't really have anything specific that I wanna enchant with it right now. So yeah, we'll just have to see with that and as we go, it should get a little bit easier because it should turn into pretty much just being this sheet metal with this scaffolding going up the side. And then I guess this consistently running up this side. So what I'm gonna do is move these all over here so it's a bit easier. Oh, and this then we start doing that, okay. So, We'll put these down. It's gonna be really obnoxious working though because these need to go upside down. So we go all the way around the outside with these. Thankfully, I guess we only do these a couple times, but uh, these do not light it up, which worries me. So I'm, I'm hoping these are the right ones. Uh, we'll see though because they don't have the same visuals on this, but I'm curious if those are the ones that you can get from here. Now, the big question I have is, are these going to light it up? Okay. You know what, that worries me. We're gonna, I, they should be read the same, but we're actually going to uh, grab these, and I know I'm gonna have to go down for that, but I'm gonna recraft all of these into those appropriate ones. And then because we have steel scaffolding on the side there, we should be able to crawl right back up. But that worries me a little bit too much for me to feel comfortable starting to build this whole thing. I thought it was weird that it didn't light it up, but so that's the reason why. So they need to be crafted into this one. There we go. Okay. So now it matches. I'm actually genuinely curious if that would affect our ability to complete it because clearly this does not register them being the same, but technically they are the same item. So I, I am curious about that. I don't, I'm not curious enough to actually want to test it on camera though. So <laughs> if one of you guys wants to give it a go when you're building this, then feel free to let me know if it actually does work or does not work. Okay, so we got another layer of these then that we have to put in. And I'm assuming we are nearing the end of these. We'll probably have one right at the top and that'll be the last layer of these. So we'll do that around there. And like so, man, this isn't really a, a fun thing to build, I guess. 
because it's all just the same. Nope. Wrong one. It's all just identical as you go up. Or at least the other ones, you have some, some flair, some pizzazz. Okay, so we have that last layer right there for that. We have that there. Finish these up. I wonder if this is the last layer for these too. Because we're not using all of them up with this one. Hmm. Another pipe there. Another pipe there. Yeah. Huh. Does it give you an incorrect number for these slabs or did I have extra? I have no idea. Maybe we had extra, but I thought we had 33 and I guess it only uses 30. Oh my gosh, did they do the math wrong? Oh my gosh. Is it because, so it says 33 and you use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so they did the math wrong because they didn't account for the fact that they wanted the stuff to be put there instead. So that would account for the three. Ha ha. That is a, it's not a bug, but uh, the required materials list is incorrect on this one. So, ha ha. And then we right click over on the redstone engineering block to build it. So there we go. It does form. It looks super cool. And we're able to climb up this bad boy right here. That is awesome. An absolutely phenomenal multi-block structure, I will say. Absolutely phenomenal. So uh, I am very happy with how that looks. And I believe we should be able to pull out of here. I don't think we need to use a uh, pump or anything. Okay, guys. So forgot that once we hook this up, we do need to apply a redstone signal to the bottom block to have it output. So we are able to get some of the crude oil out of here. I keep forgetting that I can actually grab it out. So we have the internal storage almost full with 24 buckets of this, which is great, slowly draining this. And now what we need to do is uh, turn this thing on. And so to do that, what we're gonna do for now is take, uh, we have the medium voltage, which actually has more than the high voltage in it because it didn't fully charge that. We can throw the medium voltage down here and you can see it does start to run, which is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it looks really, really cool. And you can see that you get three different things. So we get gasoline, diesel, and lubricant. And then we also have the chance at getting some of the physical stuff too. Um, so this will stop functioning, I assume, once it's completely full. And that'll be where we sort of finish off the episode. You can see that we're still pulling some crude oil from here. And if we wanted to, we could throw down the high voltage capacitor over here. And this thing should start running. And so you can see now we're actually able to continue netting, but this one's probably finished processing at this point. Yep, so it stopped, and now the internal buffer's full. We've got a ton of diesel, gasoline, and lubricant all ready to go, and this thing just looks absolutely fantastic. So next episode, what we'll be doing is setting up the diesel generator out here. We're just going to quickly do that, and then we're going to set up uh the portable generator nothing super fancy and then we are going to wire all these together probably maybe get rid of this sort of middleman silo tank that we have going here uh just because there's not a huge point once we get all the oil out of it and process to having it there uh just because this whole thing should be consistently running since it's going to net us power but that's going to be it for today guys and this video should be going up right before christmas day so i will say Merry Christmas to those of you that celebrate it, to those of you that do not, happy holidays. I hope you have an awesome time with your family and friends and get to eat a ton of great food and all that stuff and mainly get to enjoy the time off of work, hopefully, and off of school if you are still a student. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me, guys, and I will talk to you later. Upside down.